How to create a Shopify clothing store in 2023 in the easiest, most simplest way possible. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing and incredible day. I bring you back with yet another video and in this video we're going to be discussing about how you can create a great clothing store in Shopify. So this video is going to be really easy uh, to do and it's going to be really fun and really informational. So please do make sure to watch this video till the end and listen to all the things that I have to provide you, all the information I have to provide you regarding Shopify and how you can use this great platform to basically boost your Shopify store and, you know, make it a great looking clothing store. And we're going to be going through all the aspects, the uh, editorial aspects, the logistical aspects and you know all that so it's going to be really fun so without further ado let's just get straight into it now to basically get yourself started obviously you're going to come to shopify.com and we're going to log in with our store okay now once you go and log in obviously uh you can either go ahead with the current store you have but obviously we're creating a brand new store for the clothing so we're going to go and create another store and once you do that it's going to bring you here on let's get you start it okay now once you're here on let's get started and which of these best describes you obviously you're gonna go from there now you could say you know we'll help you get started based on your business needs you could say i'm already selling online or in person or you could just go with i'm just getting started once you go with that obviously it's going to give you things like where would you like to sell now obviously we're selling clothes so it could be an online store existing website or blog uh it could be uh, you know social media all these places that have uh, you know good uh, audience an audience that uh, you can reach really quickly basically so choose these places and once you've done that click on next it's going to bring you here which social channels do you sell on okay you go with insta facebook and then obviously connect those social channels what do you plan to sell first okay now here basically you have these things like uh, products i buy or make myself digital products drop shipping products services print on demand products now in the case that um, you make these products like you make these shirts or clothes yourself then you can go with products i buy or make myself but mostly what people do is drop ship clothing products so you could go with both to be honest i'm just going to go with both and click on next and once you do that from there on out it's going to ask you to choose an account for yourself okay now when you're in choose an account basically you know that's just to verify what account you want to make the store on and once you've chosen the account from there on out it goes ahead and starts validating your account so pretty simple stuff pretty robust pretty fast and as you can see it starts loading us in into the shopify dashboard into the shopify mainframe uh, the main framework and all that. So I'm just going to wait for it to load in. Now, once everything happens and once it loads in, obviously, in some cases, it's also going to ask you to choose a location for yourself because accordingly to that, it's going to give you all those taxes and cuts and stuff. So you could obviously wait for it to uh, actually give you all that data. And once it's done with all that, basically from there on out, what it's going to do is it's going to bring you right here, you know, as you can see in front of you, this is your Shopify dashboard. And obviously here in the Shopify dashboard is where you're going to start doing all the fun stuff. Okay. And what do I mean by the fun stuff? I mean, you know, as your trials are started, you're going to start doing all the main editorial sequences. So first of all, let's discuss joining a Shopify plan. Okay. Now, right now, as you can see, it says your trial just started in the bottom right. Now, the reason it says that is because obviously we're on a trial. But to obviously upgrade your plan, you can go and select a plan. And once you go there, here you can see you have three different plans. You have basic, Shopify, and advanced. Now, usually the basic plan is $19, but for the first two months, it's going to be $1. The Shopify plan is $49, but this is also $1 for the first two months. And the advanced plan is $2.99, but this is also just $1 for the first two months. Now, as you can see in the payments, transaction fees for all payment providers is 2%. Currency conversion fee is 2% and the features are also as so with, you know, different shippings and stuff. And uh, you could just get any plan you like. Just click on it and also choose the monthly billing. OK, like uh, sometimes they uh, make you go on a year plan, a two year plan, a three year plan, etc. So just go and confirm the billing cycle accordingly to whatever plan you want to choose. 
And uh, obviously, once you've chosen all those plans, just go ahead and put in your billing address to tell them, uh, you know, what plan you want to start with. Put in your credit card or PayPal, you know, whatever the essential is that you want to, um, you know, use to actually pay them. And once you've chosen all that, you're going to complete your store details and account details. So how are you going to do that? You're going to come to settings. OK, and now you're going to go to store details. And in store details, obviously, you're going to see stuff like your store name, your phone number, your contact email, your sender email. And, you know, you have more stuff like billing info. And obviously, you can change these according to whatever you want and format these according to whatever you want. You can mess around with the payment settings. You can mess around with the currency settings, time zones, unit system, all this. And obviously, the things you see down here, like the unit system and default unit way, this is basically for your packaging and shipping. OK, these are essentials that are going to be used in those cases. So obviously make sure to check these out accordingly as well. Pretty basic stuff. And obviously moving further on, once we've discussed about the store details, we could also go over to payments and this is where you're going to set up your payments. Now, Shopify payments are a bit different for Shopify payments. You're going to have to choose a payment provider. OK, payment provider is some it's like a middleman that's going to act a gateway to your actual payment, you know, setup. So set up your payment you're going to go and add a payment provider okay and once you go and add a payment provider you can get all these things like to check out adn airpay authorized bambara Kayan, and all this stuff now what you're gonna do is basically go with a payment provider that's actually available in your country we don't want to go with a payment provider that's not available in the country obviously so once you've gone with a payment provider that's available let's say i'm gonna go with this one click on it and here you have it so about to check out and obviously you have all these details regarding it down here and uh, it gives you steps like create an account, log in, access everything. And uh, once all of that is done, you have account information. You're going to put in the merchant code. You're going to put in the secret word about all the cards. And then finally activate the checkout. And once you activate the checkout, yeah, you're going to be good to go. So pretty basic, pretty nice and easy stuff. And then you can also test it through the bogus gateway. So yeah, that's a third party payment provider. Other providers that you can keep uh, are the supported payment methods. OK, so you're going to add on payment methods and uh, you can search by providers or something like that. Let's say I'm going to go with MasterCard, for example. Now, in MasterCard, it's going to give you all these different supported payment methods. The most famous one is Skrill because Skrill is widely used and uh, it's just one of the largest online payment systems. And I'd recommend Skrill as well because personally, I've used Skrill and trust me, it works wonders. It works totally amazing and uh, you will want to get your head behind scroll so now that we've discussed about those aspects let's move further on and uh, discuss the further checkouts as well so you can also add a manual payment methods for yourself now a manual payment method could be a bank deposit a money order or a cash on delivery also good ways to you know keep a good payment set up and yeah now once you're done with that and basically you're going to be set okay you're going to be good to go and from here on out obviously you're going to do more settings regarding your store so let's say you're over here okay now we're going to customize our brand you know once we're done with all of this so how does one customize their brand you're going to come to settings and you're going to come down to brand over here okay once you're over here use for most common logo applications okay so you have a lot of things, you know, you can add a default logo for yourself. Then you have primary colors of your, you know, brand or something like that. You have cover images, slogan, short description, and you can make all of this using a very, uh, you know, useful, I could say, platform, online editing platform that I am going to be showing you further on in the video how to use it. So please do stick along and um, like once we've discussed about this there's also domains okay and uh, domains are a pretty necessary thing to have okay now why are domains necessary because domains are something that people actually use to track your website like domain is a url that people are actually going to go to if you don't have a domain then there's no way that you're going to get visitors now, normally Shopify does give you a free domain, but you can make a custom or get a custom domain for yourself. So obviously that depends on you. But yeah, now that we're here, okay, 
as you can see you have all these things going on uh for yourself like uh, your logo uh different colors different cover images and obviously you can go ahead and upload them by just clicking on them and obviously it opens up this format over here so no images yet and uh, you can just click on upload image and start you know creating some type of image for yourself pretty pretty easy pretty simple stuff and uh, obviously you can generate a logo in seconds for yourself totally amazing stuff now how do you generate a logo let me show you now the first way is to use an online editorial platform like canva or something like that which I am gonna be using further on in the video but right now let's go ahead and discuss how you can keep a Shopify logo so you're gonna go ahead and write Shopify logo maker there you go you have the Shopify logo maker right here let's go ahead and enter it and here you are stunning logo maker it's Shopify's very own logo maker it's integrated with Ashful. so you're just gonna go ahead you can see all these logos look amazing so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead click on get started and you're gonna tell the people what you're actually into now obviously it's a clothing thing so we're gonna go with fashion okay and uh, once you go with fashion uh you're gonna click on next okay so just click on next and uh, once you click on next obviously it gives you all these things so you know choose your visual style so you can obviously go ahead and choose your visual style accordingly to whatever you want uh, it could be classic reliable calm bold creative elegant energetic innovative friendly modern youthful any of these okay i'm gonna go with bold and uh, you can choose uh, like multiple by the way so i'm gonna go with bold i'm gonna go with um bold vintage and innovative and once you go with that you're gonna click on next add your business name obviously i'm gonna my business names would be john's store let's call it john's store slogan you know uh let's you know keep a random slogan the best wear in town let's just call it that you know once you do that, click on next. Tell us where the logo will be used. Obviously, it could be an online web store, social media, etc. So once you do that, click on next. We made these logos for you. Now, as you can see, the settings that we gave it, according to that, it created us pretty, pretty good looking logos, didn't it? And you can obviously go ahead and scour. You can see whichever works best for you, whichever looks best according to you. So just go ahead and check all of them out now obviously like most of them are pretty good but obviously these are something that they give you pre-made it's not something that you made yourself so obviously in that case that does uh, arouse the image inside your head that you know what i want something that i created myself so let me tell you how to do that as well now what we're gonna want to do like you know once we created this uh just go ahead you know you can mess around with fonts as well so let's say you don't like this font you can change it to any type of font you want you know you have tons and tons of fonts over here let's say i'm going to choose this one you know that looks pretty much nicer then you have colors you know variety of colors you could go with a lighter color scheme go with a bit of a darker color scheme you know whatever suits you best but obviously as you can see this one doesn't you know really look too nice so go with whatever color scheme suits you best so i'd say this one looks pretty nice in my opinion then you have different uh, background layouts i'm gonna go with a totally white background once you do that click on next and there you go so now you have a proper logo and you're gonna click on download and once you click on download sign up with everything and once you sign up with everything of theirs yeah you're gonna have a full-fledged proper logo okay now once they send you the proper logo and everything you know i'm just gonna go ahead and quickly do this now once they send you your logo and everything you know uh where let me just go ahead and download that yeah okay so once you download it and uh, once you have your logo with you and everything from there on out what's gonna happen from there on out we're just gonna go ahead back to our shopify store okay and uh, once we go to the Shopify store again the same way that I told you go and add a default logo and once you go and add a default logo just go ahead and upload an image for your logo so yeah pretty simple and then you can also upload like the circular and the square canvas frame and uh, obviously accordingly you can uh, do much more uh, go ahead 
with uh, different stuffs. So yeah, as you can see, pretty simple and uh, pretty nice stuff to have. Now, you could also use Canva for yourself. You know, using Canva is also, uh, you could say, a good way to um, a good way to have an image that you want personally yourself. Now. Obviously, I'm telling you to use Canva, but I'm not going to use Canva right now. We're going to use Canva till the end of the video, like near the end of the video, because that's where we're going to need it the most. And, uh, you know, it's going to make sense why I say that once we move till the end of the video. So now that we've uh, discussed about all of this, obviously, we're going to be going ahead and discussing more on the settings that you're going to need and do. So obviously, for a clothing store, you're also going to need to set proper shippings and deliveries okay and shipping and delivery is a pretty essential part of uh, your whole clothing store okay and uh, you're obviously going to make sure to keep the shipping and delivery according to the place you live according to your whole you know uh area because according to that you know it depends if you want to if you have to give taxes or if you have to you know give the proper you could say um, shipping costs and stuff. So obviously, according to the areas, that's what it does. So basically, uh, what's going to happen from there on out is uh, you're also going to choose the processing time that it's going to take for your packaging and shipping and delivery to actually be made. And, uh, you know, uh, it's pretty, pretty fun and pretty simple stuff. Uh, obviously, it depends on uh, uh, your whole you could say again the, the whole location and everything so once you're done with that then you have the local pickup and everything and do make sure even if you don't ship to international do make sure to keep an international shipping policy so like the people who are internationally going to be shipping uh, they should know that, you know, you have a certain policy for international shippings and all that. So, you know, you don't we don't want to throw them off or anything. So, yeah, pretty simple, pretty useful stuff, as we can clearly see. Now, moving further on, obviously, there's uh, more stuff to, uh, you know, uncover over here. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is then you have other stuff like taxes and duties, but this also solely depends on the area you live in, the region that you are in, because obviously according to the region and everything, um, yeah, you're going to have a proper, you could say, uh, outlook on how things are. So uh, moving further on, what you can do in uh, more, you know, details is... Uh, you can go ahead and uh, see the taxes. As you can see, Australia, Canada, European Union, Hong Kong, Israel, the, all these places have different types of taxes. And you can also compare plans for different taxes if you want to. But once you've done that, then you also have checkouts. Okay, now what is checkout? This is basically your customer contact methods and stuff. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's again, it's something that is pretty necessary for running a proper clothing store for yourself. Now, why do I keep stating that these things are pretty necessary for a clothing store? Because, you know, like every uh, professional store or every clothing brand, you know, there are sets of rules, regulations, and things that you need to properly follow to actually have a fully functioning, have a fully functional store, okay? So what we're gonna do from here on out is uh you know uh, let's go and discuss the more editorial purposes of the store so let's go over here and uh let's go straight ahead into home and yeah now is where we start the whole editing purpose now once you're in the home page over here in the you know main home dashboard what are we going to do from here on up okay so basically First of all, we're going to go here and, you know, the way we created a logo, we're going to go ahead and create a slogan for ourselves. So we're going to write Shopify slogan maker. Okay. The same way we made our logo and here we have free slogan maker, you know, business slogan generator and everything. 
and uh, once you you know run that up uh, again go ahead into settings uh, once you do that yeah, you know, we're gonna go into brand you know down here we have slogans and everything it's a free slogan maker enter a word I'm gonna call it that's uh, you know enter a catchy word for so I'm gonna write John's store just as an example generate slogans and here we go so we've generated a thousand twenty three slogans containing John's store your slogan will look great on your online store click a slogan to get started uh so you know you have all these things there's no wrong way the appliance of john store uh, you know a lot of things that go on over here so yeah let's go with this okay and pretty cheesy but you know it does the job i guess so just go ahead and copy that paste it here and add a slogan and same with short description and everything and once you do with uh you're like mainly done with all of that yeah basically you know that's the whole editorial sequence with this branding and everything now remember when we were discussing about domains let's go ahead and uh, you know jump back into that and let's discuss domains a bit more okay now again with the domains basically what happens is that you have a pretty uh you could say wide range of uh things that you could discuss okay now what do i mean by that by that i mean that uh again you have a pretty you could say wide variety of domains that uh, you could actually check out for yourself and work out with. Now, domains are relatively pretty uh, easy to get along by because there's like tons and tons of domain hosting providers and uh, pretty simple stuff. Now, you could uh, purchase a domain from any, uh, you know, hosting websites and those hosting websites could uh, you know be stuff like Bluehost, you have GoDaddy, you have Hostinger, and uh, you know let me give you an example of let's say Hostinger. Okay, I'm gonna go over to Hostinger, and once you go to Hostinger, just uh, go ahead to their website. Let's say web hosting. Obviously, we want a domain for the web hosting. We're gonna come here. Everything you need to create a website up to 75% off on the hosting, and you know it's uh, this much, and you could you know claim your host. And uh, there's obviously three different packages that you can choose. The best, in my opinion, would be Bluehost when it comes to Shopify. So just choose a hosting and then, you know, click on connect existing domain. And once you do that, just connect it, verify that it's actually your domain. And once you're done with that, yeah, you should be good to go. And, uh, you know, connecting a third party domain is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. And, uh, yeah, it's just really fun to do it. So moving on. Then you have your main online store. So first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to come here on your online store. And once you're here on your online store, basically, there's uh, a lot to uncover. Okay. And what do I mean by a lot to uncover? Basically, first of all, you have your themes and everything. Okay. So in the themes, uh, you have all these things going on. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and choose a nice theme for ourselves. So this is the default Dawn theme. Okay. And the default Dawn theme, although it is okay, but... I personally not for me personally I don't really find it really good so what's gonna happen is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a new theme so I'm gonna go and add theme click on visit theme store and uh, once I click on visit theme store from here on out what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna come here okay so Shopify themes built for commerce okay it's built for your basic e-commerce and uh, that's what we're gonna be doing every theme meets a high standard packed with Built-in features optimized for selling online, covered by proper long-term support. So exclusively on the Shopify theme store, you have all these things like color block, fetch, dawn, sense, tailor, origin, drop, a lot of great themes. So obviously you can go and choose any nice theme for yourself, okay? Any type of theme that you fancy. And it's it's gonna be really fun to do so. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead with the uh, you know, there's uh, tons and tons of great themes, color block, fetch, and you can choose different color schemes for these themes. I'm going to go ahead and use a theme that I'm very fond of and I've used in the past, and it's a good theme. It's called Refresh, okay? So we're going to go and Refresh, and you're going to click on this Refresh Free theme, and once you're over here, you could go ahead and start messing around with its main theme. So you're going to go and click on Try Theme. And once you click on try theme, obviously it's going to come here. And uh, once it comes here, it's going to bring you to all of this over here. You know, you have all these things going on. 
So here's the refresh theme. And obviously you can go ahead, uh, like if I were to show you my store right now, it's pretty dull, it's pretty blank. You know, browser latest products, you know, example product title and all this. It's pretty, pretty blank. You know, not a lot of things are going on with my store right now. So first of all, obviously we're gonna discuss on how you're gonna add a product, okay? Before anything starts off, we're gonna go ahead and add products or you know what I'm gonna add products further on in the video I'm gonna first of all go ahead and uh, you know mess around with the theme that we have so to start messing around with the theme that you we've just added uh, which is called refresh what we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna go ahead and click on customize okay and once you click on customize basically it brings you to this editorial sequence and in this editorial sequence uh, is exactly where we're gonna start doing our editing so basically let's just get started now as you can see you have tons and tons of stuff over here don't we you know and uh looks pretty nice as a pretty good uh answer face i like what i see so in the left hand side as you can see you have tons and tons of stuff you know headers templates footers etc etc and there's obviously different pages that you can edit for as well. You know, you have home page, product page, collections, pages, blogs, cart, checkout, etc., etc. A lot of things. And uh, obviously, we're going to be going through the pages as well. But right now, let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, the, you could say, more in that stuff. Now, you also have, like, once you come over here in Others, in others, you have stuff like 404 page, password page, search page, gift card page. Gift card page will be taken in as your liquid code page. But yeah, once you've understood the whole gist of that, let's go ahead and uh, actually discuss the whole, you know, um, theme interface on how you're going to mess with the sections, how you're going to add custom sections for yourself and all that. So. Yeah, let's just get straight into it. Now, obviously right now you can see I have opened the section setting for us, but you also have the theme settings and in the theme settings, obviously you can get all these things like logo, colors, typography, layout buttons, variant files, inputs, etc., etc. And you know, you like you can see all these things, you know, this text over here, this button in the back. So these are all like Ba your basic like these are sections but inside them the things you see like this text this button these are obviously all going to be messing around with the theme settings because let's say you want to change the color of this button or you want to change the size of this button they can all be changed like once let me show you you're going to come here and in buttons look at that you can change the thickness opacity uh the blurriness the horizontal off uh, offset off but you know all that so as you can clearly see, pretty uh, easy stuff, you know, not too difficult to understand it. So, yeah, once we've understood all that, what's going to happen from there is uh, you also have content containers. Okay, so if you were to close this button section, you have content containers over here. Okay, and in content containers, you can see different things like the thickness, opacity, corner radius and much much more you know a lot of stuff that goes on with it now moving further on we're going to come down here in cart okay and in cart we also have cart types so uh you could have a drawer cart type you could have a page cart type a pop-up notification if you may and you know pretty easy stuff when we come to you know talk about it in depth now we also have a certain you know like a product section for ourselves as well so how do we access that let's go in catalog as so and as you can see here you're gonna have your products now right now as you can see we don't have any products so how are we gonna add that for ourselves let me show you to add products what you're gonna do is you're gonna come to your main store okay you're gonna come to your dashboard and everything and once you're in your dashboard you're gonna come here in products and once you're in products first up what are you selling okay so we're going to go ahead and start filling out the products for ourselves. So we're going to click on, uh, you could either, you know, do find products to sell, which is basically your drop shipping. Okay. So you could just, you know, choose a proper app like Deezer's, Printful, CTA Dropshipping, Printify. These are all great drop shipping apps. You could use these or 
what you can do is you're going to click on add your products and once you click on that obviously over here it's going to load things up so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to add a title so let's say i'm going to add a title uh pink t shirt for example and then you're going to give a description a this is a premium cotton pink tea and it looks amazing okay i'm just giving you an example on what you could write and once you do that obviously you have the media that you could write and in the media obviously you can upload any photo that you want for yourself so let me find a good photo that i had for a pink t-shirt and here we are so here's the photo we're going to choose that and once the photo is added then you choose the price and everything okay let's say in my currency let's keep it for this much the compare price is you know the price you get that it was this much but now it's this much that people just keep for you know good measure so let's keep uh, comparing price at this much okay now uh, you could keep cost per item if there are variants in your products. Obviously, my product does not have a variant, so I'm going to keep that blank. Then you have inventory where you can track quantity for yourself. You know, you have quantity with shop location, continue selling when out of stock. Product has an SKU or barcode. You know, you could set all these things out for yourself if you want to. I'm going to keep them blank. I don't want to mess around with these right now. Then you have shipping, okay? And uh, shipping is also a good, you know place to mess around with because this is where you know you can get your shipping weights uh you can include custom informations for yourself for international shipping digital product or service variants etc etc so obviously keeping a weight for your shirt like let's say my shirt is probably going to be 0 0.01 kg doesn't weigh a lot so once you do that you're going to click on save and once you click on save here you are so you've just added your first product and do remember that if there's like a proper shipping company doing it. So do make sure to add the proper, um, you could say details for its packaging. So once you've done that, obviously you can go ahead and preview it to see how it actually looks on your store. And this is how it's going to look. So here's your shirt, pink t-shirt, here's your description. And obviously over here, you can see you can choose quantity. And this is what I was talking about. This is the original price and this is the before price that they show you. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Now what you're going to do once a product is added, you're going to go ahead and reload this page. And uh, let me show you how it's going to look at that. So now a product has been automatically added. So if you were to click on this, uh, you can see we're going to come to this page. And once you're on this page, you can obviously mess around with all these things that you can see in front of yourself as well. So. Like, let's say if I were over here and uh, like if a person was to buy this and it's to appear in their cart as so, uh, you can keep this cart as like you can keep types of the cart as I showed you. So it could be a page, keep the cart type of page, a pop up notification and, you know, all that pretty simple stuff. OK, so again, let's say if I were to click on this, look at that, it like pops you up into the notification just like a page. Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? So right now, obviously, our cart is empty. We don't have any product. So yeah, obviously, it's going to be empty. Then we're going to come back to our home page. And we're going to go over it to theme settings again. And obviously, you can see more and more settings for your themes and much more. Now, moving further on, you can come down here and you can see different stuff. You know, you also have your footers, your headers. And uh, you can also add a... Um, you could say category for yourself where you can like add a whole site like to add sections you're just going to click on add section and once you add sections obviously you can add stuff like custom liquid okay those are like lines of code that you can add for yourself and uh even in like uh the sections that are already added you can add more and more stuff in those if you want to so let's say we have the header over here okay you could add header blocks Okay, and header blocks are extremely easy to add. You know, you can search blocks for yourself and um, it's pretty basic stuff. And let's say in the case that no blocks are actually available, you can go ahead and download the theme blocks, pretty simple. So right now let's go ahead in the products page and let's go to the default products page. 
And this is obviously your default products page. And in the default products page, you know, you can uh, mess around with like the background theme and everything. And how do you mess around with that? Obviously, here's your template with the text, title, product rating, price, etc., etc. So you can add different stuff for yourself if you want to. And you could add different images. And then also there's the checkout page. So if you were to go in the checkout page, obviously you can see. So this is your basic checkout page. And uh, obviously you can, you can keep some colors over here. You can keep some, you know, nice little coloring going on. So for the coloring, obviously you could go ahead and uh, like here are your colors. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, here's your solid foreground colors that you can change. And uh, like these are your foreground colors for your main page, obviously. Now, these are your background colors where you can use different accents. So this is the blue color that's used for, you know, your buttons and everything. So change that as you may change that to whatever you like, change that to whatever, you know, works best for you and all that pretty basic stuff, isn't it? Then obviously you have different grading colors that you can choose for yourself. Let's say we're going to make it uh, this one. And then obviously you have more and more stuff. You can also mess around with the layouts, by the way, which I forgot to mention. But yeah, you have pretty nice layouts that you can use. And once you've done all of this, make sure to save your page. And once you've like saved it and everything, keep on reloading the page to actually see all the work you've done to, you know, get a replenished view of how things actually are. So once it loads up, obviously it's saved, it's totally new, and it's, you know, it looks better now. Then one more thing is that on every page, like not just on this page, on every single page that you have, you can add custom CSS for yourself, okay? And custom CSS is, uh, you know, cascading style sheet. So let's say I'm going to, you know, custom CSS for making page blue, okay? Let's write that. And once you do that, CSS background color, as you can see, you have different codes over here. Like you don't necessarily actually need to know how things work. You could just copy it off of Google. But obviously, I'd recommend actually using custom CSS if you know how to use it. So let's say we're going to add that. OK. And once this is added, we're going to wait for it to load. And obviously, Right now, it didn't do a lot of changes. Why not? Because obviously we added different headings and I don't think we're authorized to do that when it comes to Shopify. So you can clear that out and let's just keep a simple background color for the whole body. Copy that. Come here. Paste it. So the background color should be light blue. So let's see how it reacts to it. So once you've kept a solid background color for yourself, obviously make sure to save it all out. And once you saved it all out, obviously go ahead and see how it looks like. So let's go to the home page, et cetera, et cetera. And look at that. You know, remember the settings we made to the, the red card, the gradients up there. Obviously, as you can see, it was perfectly implemented and it looks pretty nice. Looks pretty decent. You know, doesn't look as dull as it was. And obviously you can uh, come over here and do the same. Like, let's say I'm going to paste it in the background and uh, obviously just go ahead and wait for the light blue color to actually pop up in this section only like obviously you can keep certain settings for only one certain section and you can do that by just coming down here and then in the team settings obviously you can choose the page width the accents vertical offset etc you know pretty easy stuff so that's obviously the setting the theme setting aspect now let's go ahead and discuss the more artistic view so what do I mean by artistic view? Let me let me show you. So first of all, let's discuss slideshows. Slideshows are pretty important for your page because they um, like, first of all, they're interactive. OK, who doesn't like an interactive thing in like, you know, a page? Everyone likes an interactive thing and um, they can, you know, mess around with the photos, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's, it's a really good thing to have. And um, you can also move this up and down. So let's say I'm going to move this to the top. So here you have your slideshow and then you can slowly start adding images for yourself. So let's say I'm going to come here to the first image and you're going to come here. Click on select image. Now in select image, obviously, let's add the first product. We're going to do that. Click on done. OK, 
Now, once the first product is there, then we're going to go on the second image, select image. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add different images that we have. Let's go with this. You know, it's, it's a random image, nothing related to a clothing store, but you know, let's just go ahead and add it for good measure. And once you've added that, let's go to the third image again, select image, add images. And once you go and add images, we're going to come here. Let's go ahead and add a third image as so again. And once you've added that, choose the photo, like make sure to select it. And uh, once you've properly selected the photo, there you are. Click on done. And there you go. So now you have a proper image slideshow. And you can also mess around with like the width and the padding of this. So obviously how are you we going to do that you're going to go on slideshow as so and uh, first of all there's the setting on the the layout so what layout do you want so you can keep it as a grid that people can do the, or it could be full width it could be you know stretched across the size of the height you could adapt it to the first image as so now obviously this is a bit too big so we're going to keep it medium and if medium doesn't work, you could always keep it large. So that if that seems fine, you could keep it like that. And then you have counters, you know, the, the counters could be in uh, dots, numbers, etc. Change slides every, you can keep a time for that. Let's keep it three seconds. Okay, it's going to change slides every three seconds. Image behavior, you could keep it as an ambient movement. So, you know, they're going to be moving a bit, which is also a pretty cool feature. A pretty cool touch, you could say. And once you do that, obviously there's the text that's going to appear in like the top of your, you know, banner. So how are we going to actually mess around with the text? So first of all, you have the heading image slide. You're just going to keep it. Uh, let's call it our products. Let's call it our products as so. And then obviously you can keep more things down in the subheading which is also going to be pretty easy and simple considering the fact that we've already done most of the, uh, you know, slideshow bit. So now like once you've, you know, set a whole barrier and everything, like, uh, you can keep a subheading, like tell your brand story, three images. It says that right now you can change it to whatever you want. You can choose a button label, you know, this button that you have over here. And, uh, you could like, uh choose it to check it out you know just call it that and uh once you do stuff like that then there's the button link and this will obviously uh link you to some certain product you know so you could link it to your products page and uh obviously linking it to your products page uh whenever someone will click on this button they'll go straight to the products page where all your products are going to lie and then obviously there's more stuff you know desktop content alignment you have color scheming and all that pretty simple stuff so once we've done this let's go ahead and uh, talk about footers okay now footer is also pretty important and in the footer you need to add some stuff okay so first of all there's obviously going to be your contact info and everything you know subscribe to our email etc etc but we're also going to need to add you know our shop location our about our mission and then a random image so you're going to go here and you're going to add block. So first of all, obviously you're going to go ahead and uh, add this menu. Okay. As so, and, uh, obviously you could call it anything. It could be quick links to something. Uh, it could be, you know, any type of thing. Like let's say someone wants to go somewhere so you can add that over here. Then you can add another block. Uh, let's do this brand information, you know, now people can uh, brand information is basically, you know, editing different brand informations for yourself that you can add to your page. And obviously go here again. You could add different texts, you know, different headings as so. So uh, again, let's say you're going to tell them about yourself. So about us. OK, go on about us. Then obviously you have the description, you know, share contact information, store details, brand content with your customers. So you could, you know, go ahead. Oh, wait, let me show you what you could write. So you could write, we started off in uh, 2018, et cetera, et cetera. So you could like give a whole detailed description about yourself. 
and obviously once that is done again add another block and then there's image so you can add an image of anything it could be the logo of your store and when it comes to the logo i'm also going to show you how you're going to create a logo for yourself so please do keep on watching so once you do this yeah you're you know essentially going to be set to go and you can also add more uh different blocks for yourself so as you can see you have app blocks the app blocks that you're searching for may not be available on this template now what are app blocks basically app blocks are the app integrations that you make uh so let's learn how you're gonna you know implement ad blocks extend your theme with app blocks so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to our shopify dashboard and we're gonna click on add apps over here we're gonna go over to the shopify app store and let me show you how app blocks actually work so you're gonna come here and let's say there's an app called the calm app okay it's a calm app and uh it, it basically gives you uh all these different uh widgets for you know uh you could say your basic um shopify store and all that and you know it just gives you great features to go along with so just write calm apps and you can get different reviews for it and stuff and if you don't get it here you can always just go ahead and search it externally calm app shopify okay just write that and once you write that as you can see you, you can find calm 2.0 modern shopify theme etc etc so you know just go ahead and mess around with these aspects as much as you want and once you do that yeah we're gonna be essentially good to go now what we're gonna do is obviously just make sure to keep on saving all the new things that you keep on doing and once you're done with that, what you're going to do is you're going to go here, going to go on products, and we're going to go back to our default products like this one over here. Now, once you go to your default products, basically what's going to happen is, first of all, you have the preview. Okay, now this is your preview, which you can change for yourself, by the way. So these are previews, and uh, you can change different previews. You can uh, alternate between them, switch between them, uh, because obviously, let's say you want to change the preview of some other product. Obviously, right now, I only have one product, but you can change the preview of multiple products if you want to. But yeah, once you've discussed about that, this is here is your product information, like all the information regarding your product, as you can clearly see in front of you. Now, how are you going to, you know, optimize your page accordingly to these things? First of all, there's constraint media to screen height. Now you can either keep it on a normal height or you can actually constrain it if you want to. Then you have the desktop layout. Okay, the desktop layout, you can change it to two columns if you want to, or you could keep it a thumbnail carousel. Now you could also make it stacked. And what's stacked is that uh, like you could add multiple images for one product. So if I were to go over here, let me show you what stacked actually means. You're in products over here as so. And you can start adding more images for one single product. So let's just say I'm going to add some random images. Okay, I'm going to add one more. And let me show you what stacked and all that actually does. So come down here, you know, add all those. And once you've added all these images, you're going to make sure to save everything. Okay. And uh, once everything is actually saved, let's go ahead and reload the page. Okay, save the previous stuff. Once the previous stuff is saved, you're going to reload the page. Okay, and once you reload the page, we're just going to wait for it to actually give us all the necessary information. And once we get all that, let me show you what you're going to get. So here you can see you have the other images that we just added. And um, okay, first of all, you can choose stacked. You can choose two columns for photos. You can choose one single thumbnail with all the photos down there or you can choose a thumbnail carousel. So as we you know as we see pretty pretty simple stuff pretty basic stuff okay now then you have image zoom okay and you can choose the image zoom to be anything it could be open light box click and hover okay so let's say if someone were to hover over this it's going to be pretty easy to go over there and then you can hide or show the thumbnails for yourself as well and uh you know it's pretty easy and basic stuff to um actually get your head around all of this so then you also have the same thing that you always do the custom css that you can have for yourself pretty basic stuff now once we've discussed about that then obviously there's different multi columns for you and what are multi columns and how do you add them let me show you so let's say you're over here you're going to go on add sections and uh, you can add multi columns for yourself 
Now, what do multi-columns actually do for you? Basically, multi-columns uh, allow you to add multiple, uh, you could say, boxes of information for your page. And why is that so important? That's important because this data is uh, really, you know, important and relevant to actually add for your page. So once you're obviously over here, what we're going to want to do is uh, obviously go ahead and add the like whatever amount of text uh, widgets you want to add, whatever amount of data you actually want to input into this uh, space over here. And uh, it's relatively, really easy because, uh, you know, you get a general uh, picture of what you're actually going to want to show to the audience or what you're going to actually want to, you know, present to the audience that's uh, here to, you know, actually view your page or see what's going on with your page. So once we've, you know, discussed about those aspects, let's go ahead and uh, actually discuss how you're going to add images in these. So to add images in these columns that you can see for yourself, you're just going to click on them. Now you can either just add texts, okay, just add bars of text for yourself, or you can properly select a different image that you want to add. So in the case of adding text, just go ahead, hover over the text, choose it. And once you've chosen a text, just write whatever you want, okay? Or you could just select a whole image as I've been doing for a while. So just select an image, click on done. And uh, once you do that, there you go. So you can start adding images with your columns. So select another image, select image, you know, choose the shirt, click on done. There you go. So pretty easy stuff, isn't it? Pretty basic and easy stuff to mess around with and all that. And then obviously you have the third column and you're going to go and select image again, you know, choose everything, choose uh, whatever is necessary. And once you've done that, there you are. So pretty simple stuff, isn't it? So once we've, uh, you know, added these things, look at that. As you can see, it's it's a really nice touch. Okay. Pretty uh, decent touch, in my opinion, to the whole editorial sequence. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty fun to work around with this. And as you can see, it, it just gives your page a very artistic view, it gives your page a very uh, nice you could say a very in fact a very uh, you know uh, something that the people can actually interact with something that the people can actually you know have fun with they can look around with it etc you know pretty basic and fun stuff to have for yourself now once we've actually discussed about all these aspects let's go ahead and uh, discuss about the other stuff that comes along with it okay so uh what we're gonna do from here on out is uh obviously we're gonna go ahead and uh start messing around with the other aspects okay and the other aspects are the um you know adding different widgets of text so first of all you have my store written over here now over here you can choose if you want to add a vendor or if you want to edit some different type of value for yourself okay you can also insert a different dynamic source and inserting a different dynamic source is also a pretty good thing to have for yourself because, uh, you know, it's relatively really easy to uh, add a different dynamic aspect. So once, you know, you've uh, added all those things, what we're going to want to do is uh, you can also set different dynamic sources in other aspects in like your text styles or something like that or you can also duplicate stuff hide stuff you can choose the textile to be you know subtitle uppercase or anything around that so once we've obviously chosen that yeah you're just going to go ahead make sure to save because again please do make sure to save everything that you do because we don't want to go ahead and lose any of our data do we so yeah that was basically it when it comes to you know creating a good clothing store for your Shopify, okay? So just make sure to add all the settings that I told you in the start of the video and then optimize your store accordingly uh, with your, you know, uh, clothing. As you know, I use the pink t-shirt and everything and, you know, just accordingly add all those things. You could even drop ship if you want to, drop ship using different providers like Deezer's, 
uh, Spocket, all those. And once you use those, yeah, you're going to be essentially good to go. So it's pretty simple stuff. And this is how you're going to make a cloth branding store. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, please drop down a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see uh, more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make more for you. But yeah, that's basically about it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. And that's going to be all from me. Uh, and I'll hope to see all of you next time. Goodbye.